Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast, episode number 31 with Ali Raza. A little bit of a longer episode, but I promise it is all worth it. Ali shares a lot about his journey and um, just really uh, cool stuff that he's learned, uh, just having a self-awareness about his his path uh, to where he is today. And uh yeah, I will not uh, uh, talk too long for this one because I really want you to get into all the good stuff that we discuss. But Ollie is great. Really appreciate uh, all that he shared and the time that he gave. And um, definitely check out all the stuff that we talked about uh, in the show notes and connect with him to keep the conversation going. Uh, but after this quick message from our sponsor, this is episode number 31 with Ali Raza. Hey there, listeners. It's an honor to have our good friends at Swiftkick be a sponsor of the podcast because I've seen their work firsthand and it's truly unlike any student leadership training I've experienced. They've been voted best student leadership program unprecedented five times, so you know they must be doing something right. As a bonus for our listeners, Swiftkick is giving a $500 discount off their normal speaking fee if you mention Higher Ed Geek when you contact them. I highly recommend their trainings for your campus as your students will be talking about it for months afterwards. It's really great stuff. Check them out at swiftkickhq.com to learn more and let them know I sent you. Now, back to the show. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, jump in here. Um and yeah, if you just want to start us off, just give um, kind of a quick introduction of who you are and how you got to be where you are today. Awesome. Well, first, uh, thanks for having me, Dustin. Uh, my name is uh, Ali Raza. I, my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I currently serve as a senior program coordinator at, in campus activities at Colorado State University. Uh, let's see. I've been I've been in this role for, for about two years now. It'll be two years at the end of May. So Again, like I was saying, I'm really, really excited to, to be in this role and uh, very excited about the work that I've been able to do in the last two years at, at Colorado State University. Uh, but I guess a little bit about my professional journey. I, Like like many people, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I was a first-generation college student. Mm-hmm. College wasn't really a, a, a reality for me. It was something, something that we really didn't talk about growing up. And I was actually born in Pakistan. Uh, and I moved to the United States when I was two years old because my mom... Uh, in particular, she wanted us to have a, a better life and better opportunity uh, here in the United States, and so that was uh, that was a good move for for the family in retrospect. And thinking about just just how I was brought brought up and how I how I grew up, I lived in seven different states growing up. Uh, so I moved around quite a bit before finally landing in Texas in eighth grade. Um, that was that was interesting for me because I moved around so much I, I felt like I didn't really I couldn't really situate in one place and call one place home. Uh, anytime I would make friends, I would have to get up, move again, and start over and make new friends again. So uh, that was always interesting for me uh, growing up. But then um, as I as I got older, my my parents, you know, they really separated and got back together multiple times, and that was a really big. Uh, motivating factor for me to 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 have some sort of stability in life, and so for me, education was that stability that I that I kind of fa- found and really fell into, uh, primarily because my mom really encouraged me uh, as I as I was growing older and older uh, in my in my younger teens that you know education was the way out because you know we grew up in poverty and there's a lot of family drama also also going on, but my mom always encouraged me and, and said that. Uh, education was was one of one of the ways that I could I could potentially uh, escape from some of the harsher realities that uh, myself and my family were were facing, and so I you know I I ended up at uh, the University of Texas at Austin, you know large flagship institution public institution um, in in Texas, and there are a lot of people that that attend UT Austin, uh, and being a first gen, I I came in there and I was shell shocked. You know, I was like, I have no idea what to expect, how to even maneuver this college experience. And, um, you know, uh, it, it was, it was interesting, especially because the last, the last year prior to me even applying to, to colleges, I was, I was living on my own. You know, my mom had, had, had left and my dad had left. And so it was just, it was just me. And so the fact that I got to college in the first place was, I, I think about it every now and then. I, I, I think it's, it, it was, it was a miracle, honestly. But I had a lot of good support in high school uh, to to be able to get to college, and uh, so I'm very, very appreciative of that. Um, 
when I when I got to UT Austin, uh, I I went to UT for for five years. I started off as pre med, and uh, I was all, always a poli sci major. Uh, but the more and more I, I got involved on campus, uh, the more I realized that I wanted to do something uh, outside of law school, uh, outside of pre med, and wanted to focus more on uh, more on students, more on the campus activity side of things, more on uh, more, more more on the co-curricular and extracurricular activities. You know, I didn't, I, I really didn't even have a, a name for this until probably my middle of my junior year in, in college, my third year in college. Um, and it was when one of my mentors just nonchalantly mentioned that I could potentially do what I've been doing as, um, as a profession, as a career. And that's what really kind of changed, changed my trajectory from wanting to go immediately into law school to, to go into, into grad school for, for higher ed and student affairs, uh, but I would say I would say a lot of a lot of my professional journey is is really based on my initial involvements that I that I got uh, involved with at UT Austin. And number one on that would be becoming an orientation advisor. I served as an orientation advisor for for four years for for my entire college uh, career after my after my first year in college, and that was that was life changing for me because it really allowed me to connect with other aspects of campus that allowed me to um, to have several mentors in my life you know father figures and and mother figures even who uh, who served as, as role models for me and served as, as people who really uh, really cared for me and really wanted me to succeed and and really took me in and so I'm so so appreciative of them and of those experiences because it's because of those experiences that I was able to get connected in student government at UT and uh, I worked on campus, multiple jobs, because, you know, being a first gen, not being able to afford afford college, it was it was, it was, it was hard. Uh, but I was I was thankful because I had a lot of good people in my corner, a lot of good people who were looking out for me, a lot of people who uh, cared for for my well being and cared for my success, whatever that meant for me. And so, as I as I as I continued on, uh, and and once uh, one of my mentors, Kyle Clark, really uh, really. Uh, named student affairs as as a, as a potential profession for me i uh, i i took a I, I did a complete 180 i wanted to learn as much as possible about about what higher ed and student affairs was what what graduate school prep programs looked like i ended up becoming becoming involved with the naspa nuff program mm-hmm. uh which was which was also awesome because i got to connect with other folks uh not only at my institution but at many other institutions and be able to 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 really actualize and 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 see myself pursuing this this uh, this higher level degree um, beyond just an undergraduate degree. Um, and then I had I had the great fortune and privilege of applying for the Dungey Leadership Institute and getting accepted into that. And that was really really transformative for me in particular because that was the first time I connected with other people outside of outside of my own institution who were actively going to be pursuing. Uh, higher education or student affairs, uh, and and that really really kind of got me excited to to uh, to attend graduate school, and and I was able to attend graduate school at Florida State University, uh, you know, go Knowles. I uh, absolutely loved my time at FSU because uh, it really really challenged me in a lot of different ways, especially going straight from undergrad to grad school. I didn't have a lot of time to really kind of process. Uh, my my own graduation, my own experiences as a, as an undergrad, but I knew I was ready to continue my education and 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 really wanted to focus in on higher ed and student affairs specifically. Uh, and FSU was was a great experience because it was a really strong cohort model. Everyone in my cohort re- genuinely really got along well together, which I know isn't always the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we all cared for each other and we had great faculty. Had a lot of great experiences. My my assistantship was with the Hardy Center for Leadership and Ethics in Higher Education, which was a was really unique and, and and different assistantship. Something that was very different from what I what I had been doing all throughout undergrad. Um, focused mainly much more on alumni relations, overseeing an alumni board, putting on uh, 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 graduation ceremonies for masters and doc students, really supporting supporting the higher ed and student affairs program at, at Florida state and, uh, having, having, not, having an opportunity to work really closely with our, our VPSA and, uh, higher, 
uh, higher education leadership uh, administration at, at FFU, which was really awesome. Um, and after my first semester in grad school, or excuse me, after my first year in grad school, I had an opportunity to do a NOTA internship at Bentley University, uh, where I got connected with even more uh, essay grads in, in the area. And we had a really nice crew. Um, shout out to the Boston squad if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, met, met some great people, met, even met your partner. I worked mm-hmm. with your partner, Jen, mm-hmm. uh, at Bentley University, which was an awesome, awesome experience because never, never before imagined myself working at uh, such a specialized, small, private institution. Uh, but that was that was an awesome, uh, awesome experience. Um, and shout out to to my students at Bentley who are graduating this weekend. So, um, awesome, awesome experience. But anyway, just to uh, just to make a long story short, I had a really, really transformative and really, really amazing graduate school experience that really led me to uh, focus on what some of my professional and personal goals are, what my professional philosophy is in, in higher ed and student affairs. But I knew for sure what I wanted to do was to 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 really represent those who feel underrepresented. And especially somebody uh, especially as somebody who was born in Pakistan, somebody who identifies as Desi South Asian, I don't see a lot of people who look like me and who have identity similar to mine in 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 this field. And so I was really inspired by another mentor of mine who I met at UT Austin, Smita Rizika who who uh, who really kind of propelled my my interest in uh, being a part of this field uh, because there's just so few desis in, in higher ed and student affairs um, and so I I was lucky enough to to get a job right 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 before I finished graduate school and I I ended up at Colorado State University and I've been in this role in campus activities for almost two years now and I'm so 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 thankful that I have been here because it's been a great experience and I could not imagine a better job one coming out of graduate school. Hmm. Uh, I'm surrounded by amazing professionals. I've a great student staff and I know we can, we can chat a little bit more about what I do specifically at CSU, but I just feel so lucky. I feel really, really fortunate to be where I am. And it's a lot of it is owed to the great mentors that I've had and people that really cared for me and, um, wanted to to see me succeed Hmm. and i appreciate you know all that you shared because it's so much like kind of your personal story is like just like deep at your core of who you are and you know it led you to make decisions that led you to be where you are now and i think you know it's good to have that self-awareness and appreciation of your story and be proud of it and um i think uh yeah, I mean, it's just really cool. I, I appreciate how you frame that. Cause I'll often kind of think that way. And I, I kind of have a uh, sort of similar, I guess, in the sense of just like, yeah, definitely like, you know, going into college where I ended up afterwards and like what I've been able to do beyond that, you know, beyond what I thought um, was really possible, just my own personal growth and the things that I've had the opportunity to be a part of. And um, so I think, uh yeah, and similar in that way of like kind of going into senior year of undergrad, having that uh, kind of awakening and being like, oh, okay, you know, like I, I always thought I might work in education, like I thought I'd be a high school history teacher, but mm-hmm. being able to, you know, like having my my strengths nurtured and realizing that I can use them to help other people, as I was helped to find myself uh, at college and. Um, that certainly is a story that, you know, resonates and echoes uh, with many others, but, uh, you know, just getting, getting to hear that path that led you there uh, a bit more fully. I appreciate you, uh, sharing all that. And, um, and I guess just yeah, to, to, to hone in on one part a little bit, cause you were saying like being an orientation leader was really like the, the kind of the gateway for you. Um, is there like a particular, um, maybe like anecdote from that, you know, experience in college, uh, that, you know, something that gave you personally or professionally that, you know, still resonates like one of those lessons or just one of those interactions that kind of like, uh, you know, you, you still think about now. It's always cool, I guess, cause like the way that, you know, college impacted you that, you know, uh, you know, we all try to, <laughs> help to nurture with our own students. So I guess what was, what was one of those moments like for you when you were uh, in undergrad? Yeah, that's a, uh... You know, that's such a great question because I feel like I, I have so many of those moments, right? And uh, again, I, I think I'm just really fortunate because I had really good people around me. Um, but one of, the, one of the first things uh, and things that I'm most appreciative about that 
point that being involved as an orientation advisor gave me was was community. Uh, especially, I think, uh, as, it, as it connects back to uh, a, a bit of my story that I shared about moving around quite a bit growing up, not really solidifying and, and staying in one place for a long time. Being at UT Austin for five years, that was the longest I've ever lived anywhere mm. uh, at, at one time. And so um, when I got involved with orientation, I was able to to finally build that community, uh, to have have a semblance of continuous friends, you know, of, of course, they'll, they'll change and, and uh, change seasonally or semesterly based on classes and involvements and graduations and so on and so forth. But what remained consistent was the professional staff, really. You know, uh, uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle Clark and Esmer Bedia and uh, KJ Harris and Alex Kappas and Christy Biggs, especially. Christy was the director of uh, of new student services at, at UT and I really, really connected with her. And one of the things that I, um, that I will always cherish and remember for, uh, about her is just her passion for, for, for creating such a positive work environment, you know, putting a shield on, uh, so that we don't see, we don't get tainted with some of the, some of the back end politics that are going on, or we don't see some of the, uh, uh see as much behind the curtain, as, as students or even as, as professional staff. Um, and Christy, unfortunately, she passed away uh, due to an illness. Uh, but uh, she wanted to make sure that she finished writing my recommendation letter to, to graduate school. And she literally finished writing that uh, a week before she passed. Uh, and, and I will never forget that because <laughs> that's, that's, that's something that, that will always stick with me because she literally – Wanted to make sure that I, I had I had my graduation my my graduate school uh, letters in order, and she was committed to to fulfilling her commitment to me, and that was that was so so powerful, and that was something that, um, that I, I again I, I will I will never forget that, and uh, Christy is something that I Christy is someone who I I will always cherish for that, and that's just one example, you know I I, I think back to to my uh, early in my my second year my sophomore year uh Esmer really took me on and really nurtured me and really was 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 more of a like a mother figure for me really cared for me because she knew I had a lot of stuff going on back home with family and with my mom and my dad and my mom's sickness and my mom's illness um and she knew that I didn't really have a, have have a have a lot of places to go uh in in terms of finding that familial support um and so orientation for me was a, a, a place where I knew I knew where I was going to be every summer. I didn't have to figure out where, who I was going to be staying with or who I was going to be living with in the summer, mm-hmm. uh, going back, qu- going back home, quote unquote. You know, I had, I had a lot of great friends in high school. Um, I had a great experience in high school. And a lot of, again, a lot of that was because of community. And I knew I had people that I could stay with. I knew I had friends who I could stay with, but, being a part of orientation, that was orientation was family for me. Uh, every year, I, I, I looked forward to applying to be an orientation advisor, and you know, getting more and more, getting uh, assuming more and more leadership role within orientation, and serving as a returner, and then as an orientation coordinator, and then as a fourth year uh, orientation advisor, supporting the professional staff. Uh, and I, I knew I always had housing, I always had community, I had mentors, and I had a place to stay. Uh, and that was huge for me. Um, so those are just a couple couple examples of of how orientation really shaped uh, shaped my undergraduate experience. Uh, not to mention uh, the the hundreds of of of, of, uh, of people that I met through orientation, mm-hmm. getting to know uh, more about the ins and outs and the history and the tradition about UT Austin, and uh, learning how to how to really amplify and utilize my voice. Learning more about social justice. You know, taking that orientation class, my spring semester of my second year, that was the first time I ever heard the terminology social justice. That's when I learned that social justice is both a process and a goal. Um, and that's that really that really shook things up for me. That's what really kind of uh, accelerated my my quest for knowledge in terms of what is social justice, what are these identities that I hold, how do my identities. Uh, act in simultaneity in every space that I that I occupy. Uh, obviously, when I was when I was a sophomore in, in, in college, 
I wasn't thinking it, thinking about it in, uh, in as advanced uh, and as critical lenses as I am currently. But that was the beginning. And I, I so, so appreciate the beginning because that really kind of set the gears in motion for my, for my passion for social justice and for my passion to do this, to do this work and, 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 and figure out how I can, I can serve as a, as a good role model and really break down the systems that have caused so much inequity, so much harm, um, for, for so many, for so many students and, and professional staff on, on campus. Um, so orientation gave me a lot. Yeah. Uh, Wow. Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah, that, that's powerful. Just, yeah, that, that piece that, uh, that mentor, you know, is always going to be just like a concrete part of your story. Then obviously all the other stuff that you, you know, you learn from them, but it's like, you know, they gave you that kind of final gift and that's incredible. And I appreciate you, uh, sharing that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it is like really just like that comprehensive kind of what you got from that experience. Cause that's, you know, in, in the ideal way, the best way is like, you know, a student gets a lot from the experience. Like there's always that, you know, that tendency if, you know, you get this person it seems like, Oh, they would just like, you know, be the rock star. And it's like, yeah, you know, get some of those like strong kind of power players, but you know, it sounds like, and it was similar for me just being like an RA and different things like that. Like, you know, you really grew from the experience because it was so much stuff you just had no exposure to before. And you had these people who were, you know, believing in you and just like kind of uplifting your potential and things. So, um, yeah, that's really it's powerful stuff. And, um, you know, yeah, all of that led you to be where you are now. Um, Absolutely. I guess, yeah, just, you know, like highlight, I guess, what, um, you know, maybe drew you out there and, you know, what, what are some of your favorite things about what you're doing currently? And, uh, yeah, and then we'll kind of go on from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, you know, uh, what what really drew me to to Colorado State specifically was, um, you know, I wanted to be really intentional with my job search, and uh, I, you know, really, really did did a lot of research and wanted knew I wanted to be in a couple couple different functional areas. And uh, what really, really attracted me to to CSU and to campus activities in particular was just, um, you know. Uh, just, just, just how the students talked about uh, the work that they did on campus. What sold me was was the on campus. Uh, I had heard about CSU. My one of my one of my best friends and roommates in grad school. He went to CSU for undergrad, and uh, he would always talk about Colorado State. So I guess I, I owe credit to to Dish to Matt Dishman for 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 really planting the seed about even thinking about Colorado State because. Uh, you know, I mostly mostly grew up in the South, um, and I never would have even thought about moving to Colorado or even living in Colorado or, frankly, working in Colorado. But uh, thanks to thanks to Dish, I'd say I, I gave Colorado a look, gave CSU in particular a look, and this office in in, in particular campus activities. Uh, the professional staff get along so well with each other, which I I find so refreshing and so genuine uh, because it doesn't really happen as often as you would like to see or as as often as 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 you may experience at a lot of different institutions even at csu mm-hmm. uh, but but the office where I, where I work campus activities everyone gets along really well we have great student staff uh, i have a i have a large student staff 25 student staff that i that i oversee i work in the student center so it's literally in the in the heartbeat of campus which i i love i thrive off of off of the student energy, I thrive off of energy in general, and so uh, having having that opportunity to, to to do this work in campus activities and uh, put on large scale programs and small scale programs, uh, our office uh, puts on about a hundred programs a, a year, uh, you know, all kinds of programs. And there's there's RAM events in our office, which there's a student led programming board for students by students. Uh, we have uh, Lori Student Center Arts and so. And so they put on exhibitions and, and galleries for, for art showcases. We have a couple different galleries uh, in uh, in the student center here. And then we have campus information, box office, and the flea market, which is the area that I more specifically work with. Um, and so that's all about uh, front-facing, guest relations, ensuring that anyone who calls, anyone who interacts with you uh, knows where they're going, knows uh, what's happening on campus. It's provided excellent customer service. And um, is just treated really nicely. So 
my my area specifically, I have to know a lot of information. I have to know a lot about what's going on at CSU. I have to know a lot about what's happening. I almost have to know what's going on before uh, before anybody else really knows what's what's happening. And so I have to really make make sure that my students have that information because if if I can't relay that information down to my students, then my students aren't going to be able to be helpful. And one of the one of the one of the main things that we talk about is. I want my students to be either the last or the second to last place somebody goes to in terms of finding a uh, finding a solution or um, uh, receiving an answer of some sort. If my students can't answer uh, a particular question uh, that that a person has, then they for sure know somebody who can answer that question. And so it's all about providing those excellent uh, excellent customer uh, excellent experiences to to people who interact with with our students. Um, so I have, a, I, I have a really unique role. I do some operations work. I, I do a lot of large-scale programming. I have the, have the great privilege of uh, you know, working, working with a, uh, a few folks to, to coordinate our, our city and university's annual Martin Luther King Jr. March and Parade and celebration. So I get to work with a lot of off-campus partners as well as on-campus partners. I uh, work with a few of our uh, student diversity programs and services offices. So those are the identity-based uh, cultural centers. Uh, and so it's a, it's a really multifaceted and, uh, and far-reaching uh, role that I have. And I'm, I'm so thankful I get to supervise a graduate student and many students. And then in the summer, once, once summer comes around, I, I get to work clo- more closely with uh, the orientation and transition programs office putting on evening programs for uh, during during RAM orientation late night. Uh, so that's really exciting. I continue to have that orientation piece connected to to my to my job which I which I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is really cool. It's like a uh, you know, yeah, like a neat assortment of different uh, you know, uh, sort of things that you get involved with and obviously yeah, it's still all yeah, just kind of like you know, creating an engaging student experience and yeah, just making, and, and you know, it, it, like the, the nice part of it that it reaches out to the community as well, which is, you know, as much as campuses can be a bubble, they are not an Island, you know, they exist in their communities and, you know, fostering like a positive environment, uh, you know, all around is, uh, is really cool. Cause yeah, you're going to have guests come on campus that need to know things and you'll, you know, for sure. yeah, be doing programs that can be kind of augmented by the community as well. Um, for sure. Cause I think, yeah, definitely meaningful, you know, interactions happen that way, but, um, definitely. And I, I, and yeah. I absolutely love like, you know, the, the, the thing I love most about my job is, is definitely the, the, the opportunity that I have working with my students because, you know, they, they Dustin, they gave me, they give me so much life, even though I'm not, I'm even, even though I'm not, I'm not too far removed from undergrad and grad school, they still keep me young. Uh-huh. <laughs> they, they keep me in the loop about what's, know what's the the latest and hippest thing that's going on but but more importantly um it's really really rewarding personally to see see their transformation from from day one of the semester to the end of the semester and then even to the end of the academic year uh and so that's been one of the greatest joys that i've had and that i've experienced on the other uh, on the other side you know now now as a pro staff having having uh having a large staff supervising a grad student as well um, seeing the growth that these students are, are are experiencing and seeing how they're able to to make meaning and talk about the exper- their experiences on this job, one of the things that we really we we really try to talk about is uh, reframing this from just being a campus job to what are some ways you can trans uh, you you can gain transferable skills from this job and apply it to internships to future internships or jobs outside of CSU uh, and that's been really rewarding because. I've had several students graduate over the last couple of years, uh, and they always come back and they're like, "Wow, we we actually learned a lot in in, in this campus job." And uh, a lot of it, uh, a lot of a lot of credit goes to, to goes to my grad who has put in a lot of work and really assisting me and working with me to to reframe how our students view working on campus. Um, and so I, I I absolutely love my students and. They they are for sure the number one reason why I I, I took this job and uh, the number one reason why I continue to be in this role is because it's uh, it's really rewarding to see see them grow and flourish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's uh, definitely what it's all about and what it you know, always should be about. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, and that's uh, 
yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, just being on that other side and, um, you know, yeah, it's like not just the students that Mike would come with a question. It's like, yeah, mentoring and guiding the students that you're working with uh, so closely. And, um, yeah, and I think it's, yeah, just that, that reframing, like you said, is important to where cause it's, it's the same thing of just like, oh, I'm graduating and I'm like heading into the real world. It's like, no, you've been in the real world. <laughs> on camp. Like you've right. been like, you know, doing all your stuff and learning about the real world and like, not you know some like hard switch it's like yes it is going to be a transition but you know yeah it's kind of that similar thing like reframing where it's like the things that you've been doing here are important and they like are valuable you've learned a lot you've grown a lot and like it's going to transfer and you know uh it's yeah just uh, helping people with nurture that confidence a little bit i guess in that regard totally so, absolutely um, but uh yeah, I guess just to switch gears here. So, you know, moving on from kind of the, the higher ed stuff uh, to more of the geeky stuff. So, yeah, you know, in the real world here, uh, you know, what are the things that you're geeking out about right now? You know, is it like stuff that you've just discovered, stuff you've always been into? Um, yeah, just kind of lay that out and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll dig in. Yeah. Um, so I, I geek out about a lot of things, honestly. <laughs> um you know, DC Comics are, 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 are things that I uh, that I've always I've, I've always geeked out about. Uh, I'm much more of a Marvel person, m- m- much more Marvel than DC. But uh, DC and Marvel have always been something that I've always been really really into. Uh, between the comics and especially the movies and, and all of the shows that have been on Netflix. You know, mm-hmm. I think I think the first summer that I that I moved moved to Colorado, I literally. Obviously, I, I didn't have any friends in Colorado, and I didn't know anybody. So, um, like any uh, like any person p- potentially would do, is I would just go come home and then just binge watch uh, all of the DC and Marvel uh, shows from Netflix. And so that's literally what I did for uh, uh, that 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 first summer, besides exploring. But uh, it was it was a great way for me to kind of catch back up on a lot of things that I've been missing, and a great way to kind of reconnect with. Uh, uh, a lot of my my interest was uh, DC and Marvel growing up. Um, other things that I've I've really geeked out about. I've always been a huge Star Wars uh, Star Wars fan. Uh, when I was when I was a lot younger, I think this is probably I want to say in s- sixth grade or seventh grade. Um, I spent an entire summer reading every single Star Wars book, all the <laughs> spinoffs, all of the the spinoff of the spinoffs. Literally dedicated an entire summer reading every single book. I think by the end of it, I read probably forty, like forty plus Star Wars books, just specifically Star Wars related, mm-hmm. uh, and it was amazing. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> expanded yeah, universe was, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, th- things that I've really really been geeking out about more so nowadays. Um, I, you know, I've I've really really geeked out a lot about travel hacking. Um, over the last, last year and a half, last couple of years, I've really gotten, gotten into, um, figuring out how to, how to travel for cheap, um, how to travel often, how to maximize my time, uh, my, my paid time off to, to be able to find really, really sweet deals to, to get away and kind of recalibrate and, um, explore and see, see friends, explore different areas. And so I've really, really been, uh, honing in on that. I kind of hobby uh, and really geeking out about that. I've gotten really into into the whole points, uh, the points game and uh, different credit cards and how to maximize my points and leverage uh, leverage different uh, awards and rewards and lounge access and and things like that. So that's been that's been a really like really geeky and nerdy thing that I've been I've been talking a lot about with with a lot of my coworkers and a lot of my uh, a few of my other friends. And <laughs> over the last year and a half, I think I've gotten uh, probably five or six other folks at CSU really involved into the whole points game and the whole travel hacking uh, craze and whatnot. So that's been that's been really really fun, uh, and that's been that's been really awesome too because I've been able to 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 go on a lot of trips to uh, to to visit friends and you know I just got back from Cartagena, Colombia. Uh, you know, as soon as the semester semester was over, I I, I took a took a four and a half day uh, trip down to Cartagena, Colombia, and I was able to find a really really uh, affordable uh, flight to to get down there. And I stayed in the host stayed in hostels and really ex- immersed myself in the culture. Was able to practice my Spanish and 
kind of reintroduce my, my, myself into, into my uh, Spanish language that I, that I used to take in undergrad and in high school that I haven't been able to use very often and really learn more about the history. I know, Dustin, you mentioned that you're, uh, uh, back in the day, you thought about being uh, uh, a history teacher. Mm-hmm. Well, history was one of, my, one of my minors, and I absolutely love history. And that's one of the things I love most about traveling is being able to, to know the history of the land and history of you know, the current settlement and um, you know, current, uh, the, the, the cities and whatnot. And so I learned so much about Cartagena this, uh, you know, probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago now that I got back uh, where, where I went. Uh, and so travel hacking has definitely been, been a, a, a new hobby, something that I've always, I've been geeking out about. And I'm always on the lookout, uh, using Google flights and the point sky.com, just looking at, looking at ways I can, I can maximize my money and maximize my, my time off. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause honestly, I, you know, I, I I've never really been, uh, somebody who buys, buys things, buys a lot of things. You know, I have a very, very strict and tight budget. Um, you know, I, I, I've even been paying off my student loans at a, at a very, very aggressive rate, you know, spending about half my pay paycheck every month, just trying to pay that down. Cause I'm, you know, uh, I don't know how I feel about the current administration. Actually, I know exactly how I feel about the current administration. <laughs> well, yeah, just <laughs> let, 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 yeah. let me let me make that clear. <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure how long public service loan forgiveness is gonna is gonna last. And so I'm just like, let me just get this. Let me just try to try to knock this out. Um, yeah. And then any and any any other uh, extra money I have, I try to try to save for 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 trips and travel and experiences more than. More so than things, you know. I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind that I have clothes and and stuff that are a couple years old. For me, it's just it. it uh, that's not as important to me as uh, connecting with people that I care about, uh, exploring the world, uh, and, exp- and and exploring. Uh, ex- uh, you know, reconnecting with friends and seeing family and friends. And uh, you know, I got my passport in November, and so I've been on a on a, on an international travel kind of craze a little bit just trying to figure out how i can travel more internationally uh and more affordably and and figure out how i can uh continue to learn learn more about about uh, different history and culture and really immerse myself into that Um, because life is short man and i i really want to try to uh try to do as much as i can i'm I'm definitely a maximizer i want to do as much as i can with as little time uh time that i have especially while i don't have a lot of obligations with, uh, with, I, I, I don't have a partner. I don't have, uh, you know, a, a family to take care of too much or, uh, a lot of, a lot of responsibilities. So I have a fairly flexible schedule, which I'm very, very fortunate to have. So yeah. trying to take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And I know it's like some people come at it from different ways. Obviously, like it's just, yeah, if you're, you know, getting good deals and all that, you could just go to, you know, like on more trips, but then it's also like, if you're, you know, like doing a lot of that stuff, we have, I think it was, um, um, uh, Liz gross who is on, who like, does the travel hacking as well. We're like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, well, I really want to go to this place, but it's going to be a really long flight. So if I can like be super like logical and like planning and like, yeah, just find good deals and use points and whatever, mm-hmm. then like this, you know, 16 hour flight to this place we can be in first class yeah we can use the airport lounges we can like do different right. things. like so it's like just getting into the the details there because like i was just remarking to her it's like yeah like you know because she would you know buy things out like very far in advance and i'm like well i know like sometimes you can get a good deal like two months out from when you're flying so i usually do that and, and like and she's just like that would give me like an anxiety attack or something <laughs> you know like she has to like really get down and like get you know making charts or something and making sure she's uh getting the, the best deal but i guess and i get i hear more more and more people uh kind of talking that way and it's like i, I get it now because i think I, i'm starting to get to that point where i just i never traveled probably for the first 25 years of my life and within like mm-hmm. the past uh because my birthday is coming up so i'll be 29 so like the past yeah happy early now, birthday yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and yeah so like the past couple of years i've just traveled so much more than i did in the previous you know quarter century um so i'm like trying to like uh yeah, thinking that way as well. I'm like, even just, yeah, like doing short trips and yeah, you just do it to like visit friends and family or, um, mm-hmm. you know, for our, you know, our company, we have offices in different places. So it's a, mm-hmm. kind of a nice anchor point that way. But, um, 
yeah, it's very cool. And yeah, I think it's funny. Yeah. Just like you're, you know, kind of the, the dichotomy of like DC and Marvel. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's possible to like both. And like, I think certain, certain phases in our lives, we might be like, well, I like this one a little bit more I like this one. More. Right. Yeah. Like, right. You know, the Marvel cinematic universe is really dominating and it's really good stuff. And like, oh, you know, DC absolutely. has some of its animated movie and this like, you know, whatever you're feeling, whatever you need, whatever you, you know, or kind of, uh, you know, whatever's resonating and stuff. It's just kind of, you know, it's funny that way. I'm just like, yeah, like different parts of our lives. We might be uh, more or less into to one thing or the other different medium. Um, but uh, yeah, cause yeah. It's, it's also for me, like more so like the Star Wars, Star Trek thing is very uh, resonant. Cause I used to like, be like oh, I'm not even, <laughs> even going to bother with Star Trek. But then I went, it's like, oh, it's, it's not bad. I get it. It's like d- different mindsets. I might be like, oh, I really need to watch like a Star Wars movie. Cause I just want some like, you know, some action. <laughs> and then like, if I want to be, you know, cerebral, you know, go for, uh, go for some Star Trek. But um, right. so, yeah, I've never really yeah. gotten into Star Trek actually. So that's uh, that's funny that you mentioned that, but, I'm definitely definitely more team Marvel than than DC, <laughs> but I, but I, 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 I definitely hear what you're saying. You know, sometimes, it, it, you know, it's 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 enjoyable just to just to kind of dip into the other universe a little bit and, and yeah. see what's out there. Well, see, yeah, and I get like the best parts of it because it's also you know like you don't. I think some people get like put off because it's like well i like spider-man but like i could never you know get into his higher <laughs> it's like well no you don't have to like just like read like the best of stories you know and like mm-hmm. some of those just are really going to be resonant moments for the character and just the lessons and stuff and like um because i remember there was something it was it was a spider-man related one um, and he's my favorite character but it featured hawkeye and i, I think he's getting yeah. a little bit more prominent in marvel yep. comics but it was just this little like um uh kind of vignette for his character that Spider-Man was involved in. And it was talking about, obviously he's not a super powered person and right. all he has is his bow. And <laughs> <laughs> the idea is like, he never misses because he has to never miss because he's there with Iron Man. He's there with the incredible Hulk and Thor right. and all that. So it's like, he practices all the time and he's like, I don't miss because I can't miss. Like I miss, <laughs> I'm here with these other people. Like, and if they're counting on me and all that, like it was just this really like resonant moment for this character in this small thing. And it's just like, you know, you could like read little like stories like that, that somebody might like cherry pick out. And it's just like, mm-hmm. if you read these, you get such an appreciation for the character and you know, it adds just dynamic. If you then see them doing one thing or another or involved, you're just like, like, yeah, this character, like, you know, really values being part of this team. So they're going to show up. They know what their strengths are, he, you know, and that sort of thing. So it was just like cool stuff like that. I, I always do like the, kind of the team ups and, you know, those sort of things, but. Um, Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and certainly, you know, Star Trek is worth a dabble, you know, next generation is kind of the <laughs> peak. Um, I honestly, I've, I've watched most of the movies. I haven't even touched like deep space nine and Voyager and all those other ones. But um, so I guess, yeah, and, and anything, I guess, with, you know, those things that you're into, it's another sort of thing. Like, is there, like, a moment or, like, a bond that has been sort of um, kind of nurtured? Like, how is these hobbies, and maybe it's, you know, it's, it's the, the travel, you know, you mentioned, like, a recent trip that was mm-hmm. really, you know, uh, meaningful for you. Um, you know, how these hobbies, these things that you geek out about, like, how do these positively contribute to your life? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's a, that's a great question because uh, – if, 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 if I didn't have hobbies, if I didn't have things that I geeked out about, uh, I would constantly be thinking about work and mm-hmm. you know, I would constantly be immersed in, 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 in work, which, you know, I, I am, a uh, I am definitely a workaholic. Uh, and my, in my, my first year, especially I, I took maybe, maybe two days off total in a 12 month period, which was not good. I would not recommend that. Um, but I've been I've been really trying to trying to be more more thoughtful about taking time off and really being a lot more thoughtful and intentional about getting involved in other uh, other aspects of life outside of just work. Uh, and so these hobbies, these these uh, 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 these other things that I'm geeking out about, whether it's travel or whether it's Marvel or whether it's you know movies or whether it's cooking. You know, I love to cook. I love to be outside, especially being in Colorado. You know, we talked about this earlier. Uh, the climate here is so good and uh, there are so many things to do outside and I've really, really gotten a lot more into into the outdoors and I really appreciate uh, nature and there's so many national national parks uh, in, in, in the Mountain West region uh, that are that are accessible, that are, you know, within driving distance or close by. Uh, that that's something that I've gotten really, really 
uh, a lot a lot more into uh, and I, I absolutely love that because I can I can escape from from work and kind of you know t- take that hat off for, for for a little bit of time and just immerse myself in in trying to be present uh, immerse myself in trying to you know just be with nature or just be with good community be with friends uh, the brewery culture is also really really big in Colorado. Mm. Uh, there's a ton of breweries. I'm sure you've you've kind of gotten a taste of that oh, yeah. as you've been to Denver a couple <laughs> times, right? <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, no, I think it's a place I just went to that was incredible. Uh, was Asheville, North Carolina, and yeah, I, and, yeah. I ha- and I haven't been to Denver, but I know that that has like a great scene. So that was that's just like I'm just yeah, you're speaking to me right now, so I, I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, and so so the brewery culture is, is huge too. So uh, with 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 us getting more than 300 days of sunshine, uh, no humidity. Uh, you know, very uh, pedestrian friendly, dog, animal friendly, bike friendly uh, environment. People are always outside, and uh, I absolutely love the summer because uh, it's it's so nice. There's so much sunshine. There's so much vibrancy. There's so much energy. People are outside, going on hikes on the weekends and brunch, and you know, going on brewery tours and doing this and doing that. And uh, it's all all of those interests and hobbies and even in travel, all that contributes positively to my life because uh there's just so much more to life than just work um it it, it allows me to just kind of get away and uh and be with myself or be with be with other other people and um you know just uh, again i'm a i'm a a maximizer and i i just i i I love to live life uh in 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 uh i i didn't i didn't mention this earlier i but when i was in college i lost when I was in college and in grad school, I lost uh, a couple really, really close people to my uh, in my life. Uh, I mentioned my ment- one of my men- mentors, Christy, uh, but I also lost uh, three other really, really close friends. Um, friends who were uh, one of my best friends from high school. He passed while I was in college. Um, when I was coming back from my internship in Bentley, um, I had two friends within uh, two really, really close friends within. Uh, within a three-week period, uh, pass away. Uh, both of them were abroad, um, and that really that really affected me a lot, Dustin, because I <laughs> I was not used to loss of life, uh, and especially at such a young age, losing college age friends and high school age friends, and losing a mentor like all back to back to back to back. It was really really rough, and so. Because of that, I, I, I told myself that I wanted to live my life uh, fully and I wanted to live my life because I don't know how much life I have. Um, any, any, anything could, could happen. Um, you, know, I could, you know, I could get hit by a car tomorrow or you know, something, something could happen. Uh, but I, I just want to try to maximize each, each day that I, that I do have uh, and try to, try to get, get the most out of, out of the life. So I've always kind of had, had this philosophy of, living life fully and, and trying to do, trying to do the most that I can with the, as little time that I have and just cram as much as possible. Um, and so that's been, that's something that I've really been able, that's how my hobbies and interests have really been able to contribute to my life because, um, it, 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 it nurtures and feeds into, into the life that I want to live and into the life that I know is so precious and, uh, should not be taken for granted because it could be taken away at any second Right. Um, yeah. I mean, and that's, and it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing, I guess, just, you know, it's just a natural part of life is, is death. And, um, when you experience those things, it, you know, certainly is going to have, and you should feel it and you should process it. You know, you're going to feel sad. You're going to, you know, go through some tough emotions, but, you know, taking it the way that you have to be like, you know what, it doesn't do that person any credit to sort of just like wallow in despair for the rest of my life. It's like, no, I want to continue to live life because like they were a part of mine. And, you know, if I do something and it makes you think of that person that you, um, that you miss, you know, that was a part of your life or just absolutely you know, help, help you to, you know, sort of, you know, yeah, just live your life, uh, you know, as you see fit. And, you know, like you said, like more to it than work to where, you know, if you, I think that's it is that trap where it's like oh you really invest yourself in work and you get a lot of meaning out of it and it's like you know that can be all well and good but if it's like if that's all your time it's it's not even probably going to be mostly like meaningful time you're probably just doing a lot of like busy work you're not being maybe as efficient where it's like well I got to get these things done in 40 hours a week and 
Like right. I need to make the most of that work time. So I'm going to be really efficient and do that well. And then I'm going to clock out, go home and like, you know, yeah, take a vacation. And then when I come back, I'm going to really appreciate being back and be like, all right, let's like get to work. Exactly. I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready to tackle things. Um, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's really great. Yeah. It sounds like you're, you're just in a perfect place to kind of be able to have that center um, where it's, you know, uh, a healthy sort of uh, professional environment and personal environment so that those can kind of, you know, that's, that's what is our life. It's, you know, tr people try to separate them too, where it's like, you know, one doesn't you know influence the other, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just being able to have a nice harmony, I guess is always the, you know, different terminology, but, um, yeah. And I guess, you know, as you're kind of, uh, you know, balancing your time and, and, and just kind of nurturing good harmony and balance and, uh, you know, joy. Uh, so like, what are the things right now that you're, uh, consuming specifically, uh, whether it is sort of, you know, uh, you know, comic books or whatnot, but, um, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, what are you reading? What are you watching and, or listening to just anything specific that we could, uh, you know, highlight in the show notes? Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've, I've really picked up a lot on since I've, uh, since I started working professionally full time, um, is just reading for pleasure. I, I really enjoy reading or reading for pleasure now. And I've read, uh, read a range of books. Uh, one of the books that I just finished reading, uh, is a book called the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, and it's all about, you know, centering myself and focusing on the present moment. Uh, and you know, it goes back to what we've been talking about, right. Um, you know, focusing on, focusing on the now, focusing on the present, you know, not necessarily dwelling so much on the past, like remembering and honoring the past, not really thinking too much about the future, because uh, oftentimes we can we can we can get into I or at least m myself I can I can sometimes get into into that um, into that rut where I'm like always think I'm getting very nostalgic or I'm getting or I'm thinking so much about the future and then I'm just missing missing what's happening currently in the in the present moment and so that book has been really really awesome for me uh, in terms of centering myself and and really. Uh, slowing things down a little bit uh, and focusing on the present moment, focusing on the right now, the right here and the right now. And so that's been, uh, that's been, that's been really, really awesome. Uh, so that's, that's something that I, uh, that I recently read. I just, uh, today I started, uh, one of my, one of my grads, uh, one of my students, uh, let me borrow a book called, uh, eloquent rage, eloquent rage, uh, by Brittany Cooper. Um, so this is, uh, this is a, a book that I'm really, really excited to read because, uh, our, our VPSA and a couple other folks had mentioned reading this book, and, and so I wanted to, I wanted to uh, spend some time reading the book to kind of uh, you know figure out a little bit more about what it's about. But uh, essentially, it's a it's, I you know I just I just started uh, earlier today, so I'm just getting into it. But I'm really really excited to kind of uh, you know link back up and potentially talk about what that book meant for me uh, in terms of that. Um, as far as what I'm watching, uh, I I finally started watching This Is Us mm -hmm. uh, a couple a couple months back, and I I ended up binging binging This Is Us, and that was not good for my mental health, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, I haven't watched yeah. it. Uh, Jen has, but just like okay. I think she went through it really quick too. Yeah, just like just an emotional right. gut punch every single episode. Like it was yeah. it was a lot. I and I ended up finishing it from start to uh, uh, completing it from start to finish in a matter of probably two weeks. Mm. Uh, and that was, that was a, a, a that was a lot, <laughs> but I, I, I really, really enjoyed, uh, enjoy the show. I love Sterling Brown. Uh, he's an awesome actor. Um, of course I watched uh, black Panther, which was, which is now like one of my all time, one of my all time favorite movies. Definitely, definitely up there. Um, definitely one of my uh, favorite, uh, uh, favorite Marvel movies of all time. Um, uh, I, you know, I haven't seen infinity wars yet and oh. that's, you know, I, I regret to admit that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm waiting. I, I, I made a, I made a promise to a friend that I would wait for them to watch, watch with them. And so I'm, I'm holding out for now. I've been, I've blocked out everything on Twitter and Facebook for any spoilers. So, it's it's getting hard. My supervisor has been teasing me. He's like, <laughs> "You need to you need to watch it because I can't guarantee I'm not going to spill something in our next one on one." And I was like, "Oh gosh, yeah, I need need to get on it." 
Yeah, well, um, you're, so you're definitely in for a treat, though. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And, and then as far as listening, I uh, I'm a huge West Wing fan. You know, again, going back to my poli sci nerdy kind of uh, uh, attribute growing up. Uh, you know, my major, what I studied in undergrad. So I I love the West Wing, and I I listen to the West Wing Weekly, which is an awesome podcast if if you haven't listened to it or if you're into that. Um, and then anything by NPR, I'm always that's, mm-hmm. that's part of my morning routine or part of my routine anytime I'm I'm driving anywhere. It's just uh, I just have NPR blasting because I love I love being in the know, figuring out what's going on, or you know if This American Life is on or uh, TED Radio Hour is on through NPR, then I, I definitely subscribe to that because I'm I'm all about that. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I know um, for me personally, I'm uh, looking forward to Deadpool 2 um, as of the yes. recording of this episode. I'm um, seeing it this weekend. So um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, like as of the recording, you've not seen Infinity War. Hopefully when this comes out, you have. People can process with you. It's, it's you know, um, yeah, but you're, you're in for a treat. And I, I know it is. Yeah, just like, you know, like save yourself uh, to see it kind of uh, for the first time with uh, someone and um yeah, because I just love a you know any excuse to head out to the movie theater, and so it's always a good time during the summer when there's uh, more than enough movies um, to check out. But um, right, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, we will wrap up the episode here. I'm interested to hear um, you know just ending things on an optimistic note. What is uh, something or things that you are looking forward to uh, in your job, life, and or the world? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a big question. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm just looking forward to, I, you know, really to scale it down. I'm really looking forward to summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, summer is, is nice cause you know, things, things, things are a little bit quieter. They're still busy. They're just a different kind of busy, um, you know, beautiful weather, great people, not as many students are, are around, uh, in, uh, in the city of Fort Collins, which is great for traffic and parking and just kind of getting around, <laughs> um, selfishly. <laughs> um, but you know, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to, you know, all the, all the life's mini adventures that, that, that are going to come this summer. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to check out a couple of national parks. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a, a couple of close friends' weddings that I'll be going to. I'm really, really excited about. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, the, the world hopefully kind of recalibrating a little bit. Uh, and, 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 and holding on to some hope. I know there's been a lot of negativity that's been, that's been going on, uh, in, in, in the United States and, uh, across the world. And there's just a lot of different, uh, a lot of different, uh, tragedies and, and hate and, um, very tough, tough things going on. And, uh, it, it's really affected a lot of our students and a lot of our staff and a lot of people, especially this semester and this last semester, I'm, you, you might, you might, you might've felt some of this as, as well. And, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, to a more positive outlook. I'm looking forward to, uh, more hope, uh, in the future that things will get better. And there's just a lot of, um, there's just a lot that, 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 that needs to be, needs, needs to be done. Um, but I'm excited for a little break. I'm excited mm-hmm. for summer and sunshine and just have a good time. And, um, continue to find a find find some good travel hacking ways to <laughs> to to see the world yeah for sure and i think yeah it's nice yeah like like you're saying like it's still busy different kind of busy you know life is a little bit more manageable in the summer especially like working in high red when mm-hmm. you know, sort of the, the pressure eases off and not as many students around um so you can maybe just kind of yeah like slow down be more mindful do things that you enjoy and you know, yeah, like having like weddings and these different, you know, just like special moments coming up. And like, I think that can always help on a personal level to feel more kind of optimistic. gives you something to look forward to, or you just get really filled up by those interactions. And it is just like, you know, the world is, you know, on a broad scale, getting better all the time. People don't really ever like talk about that because it's just like usually like just very small incremental change. The -hmm. exceptions to the rules, these awful things that happen are noteworthy and should be talked about, but you know, there's things to be hopeful for if you look for it. And like, you're saying like, hopefully they, like people just start to like, you know, settle down, focus, work together, talk to each other. And like, right. you know, uh, 
yeah, I don't know. And it's just, I think we're so well positioned for a lot of positive change to happen. It's just the people who are kicking and screaming and trying to hold it Mm -hmm. up as long as they can. It's like, it's sort of inevitable, (laughs) but if you want to like, you know, delay it, whatever, we're going to try and work around it and do whatever. But, um, yeah, I just can certainly, uh, you know, obviously just bog us down in terms of just like our mood. But like you said, like certainly these things have a very real effect on the students that we work with. And we, you know, it's just this like continual game of catch up, just like, okay, great. What's happening today? Like, what are we going to have to deal with? You know, and it, it just is certainly exhausting. And I appreciate that you're, you know, continuing to take the time to do the things that you enjoy and see the people that you care about. And, um, you know, uh, it's always uh, good conversations like this, just like kind of good vibes and uh, talking about all the important stuff. And yeah, um, yeah, just really appreciate the, 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 you know, the time here with you and all that you shared. And um, yeah, it's just really, really awesome. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely have to uh, look you up once we, uh, <laughs> whenever we get out to Denver and we can experience some of that, uh, some of those good feelings there. And absolutely. Um, yeah. And just, uh, yeah, again, appreciate your time, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Just have a uh, good rest of your night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity, Dustin. Really enjoyed uh, spending some time with you and uh, uh, being on the podcast. So I appreciate the opportunity, and hope you have a good rest of the night. Tell Jen I said hello. Yeah, absolutely. All right, have a good one. This podcast is a proud member of the Connect EDU Podcast Network bringing together diverse voices and thoughtful discussions to the higher ed community. Check us out online at connectedu.network or on Twitter at connectedupod. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.